The next method of manipulation is one of the biggest and it's one of the hardest to transcend and rise above because of how ingrained the belief in the financial system is in our world. So the financial system is basically a system of enslavement and it is based on uh, the principles of fiat currency and debt which we will talk about. Uh, the, one of the originators of the Rothschild banking dynasty, uh, Maya Rothschild, made this statement. Permit me to issue and control the money of a nation and I care not who makes its laws. Because he knew that all you really had to do to take control of the uh, direction of a nation is to control how its monetary system works and control the way that the money is printed, the interest rates, to charge interest on it, and to control the, the, the amount of money in circulation. And what we have in effect today as our monetary system is a system of fiat currency. Fiat is a Latin word which means so be it, let it be. And this is exactly what our monetary system is. Money is printed at the whim of money printers. They simply say, let it be. The Federal Reserve System, a uh, con conglomeration of corporate, privately owned banks that ha has nothing to do with our system of government. <clears throat> it is wholly privately owned and operated. And it essentially controls our government, our lawmaking uh, body and our lawmaking decisions in, uh, in Congress. And uh, this fiat currency system is actually a system of printing money at the whim of, of the money masters in order to create one thing, and that is debt. Our money system is essentially nothing but debt, because every dollar that is printed carries debt with it. The amount of money in circulation never equals the amount of debt that is owed. So it is a self-perpetuating system of debt that can never be paid off. It just grows larger and larger and larger. Thomas Jefferson warned against this type of a monetary system. He said that banking institutions are more dangerous to our liberties than standing armies. If the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their currency, the banks and corporations that will grow up around the banks will deprive the people of all property until their children wake up homeless on the continent their fathers occupied. He understood it perfectly. He warned us against this practice of fiat currency and uh, um, giving too much uh, power and sovereignty to uh, corporate banking institutions. The next method of the financial system is taxation. And taxation is one of the clearest forms of indentured servitude, at least it is to me, uh, than anything else that I've ever looked at. Uh, if you're saying to someone, for whatever reason, you must give me this much of what you make, and I will determine how much of that you will give me, I can't understand how anyone can look at that and not understand that that is a form of slavery. You're saying that you're the, 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 the product of your labor is not your own. It does not belong to you. It's essentially saying that your physical body that you use to put your labor into effect in the physical world does not belong to you. And it is owned by someone else who can tell you what you will and will not do with your earnings. So. This slide should upset a great deal of people because these four months are essentially uh, the months of the year that your average middle class American works for nothing. The, all of this money is given to the state. All the money you make on all of these days, January, February, March, and April, are all given to the state through various forms of taxation. Then you're taxed on what you buy as well. But the average citizen, one-third of their earnings are given over in taxation, and we actually still think that we are a free people. So manufactured lack is the next example of how we are controlled through the financial system. And <clears throat> third world nations uh, that, that are controlled by these banking dynasties, they get into these situations not because 
they don't have the resources to feed and clothe their people it is because their leaders have gotten into debt contracts with foreign banking institutions and then when they squander those loans for um, <clears throat> they, they go to countries that they know that they can manipulate their leaders when those loans are squandered and they really can't pay back the interest or even the principal on those loans they come in and say, well, we'll forgive some of this debt if you let us use your land for uh, certain things that we want to build and, and, uh, and ship out. And they get into um, shipping, uh, growing cash crops on their land and shipping them out, uh, uh, exporting them to uh, then import, buy and import goods into their country that really they don't really need from other countries that they could grow on their own land. And they're exporting their main resources that could be used. Uh, those resources could be used to feed and clothe their people. And that's how uh, uh, lack and uh, third world debt actually works. There's many documentaries about this that you could check into, but uh, the, the, the world has enough resources to feed and clothe every single living being on this planet, many times over. And uh, the, the idea that these nations could not f feed their own people is ludicrous. Uh, the reason that this is happening is because they are <coughs> extremely uh, uh, put under a uh, har uh, hardship of debt to international banking institutions like uh, uh, the IMF and the World Bank. Uh, the other aspect of the financial system that really goes to work on our consciousness is that people come to be seen and to see themselves as human resources, not as individuals, but as a resource to be used as the corporate structure wants to use us. To look at human beings as simply a resource is to devalue their individuality and their uniqueness and have people see themselves as a thing, as something that isn't really actually human, as an object. <clears throat> see, the, uh, they want us to see ourselves as simply worker drones. You're just a drone that can be replaced at any given time and someone else can step in and do that task. Uh, it was described beautifully in the allegorical movie The Matrix by the character Morpheus who said that uh, humanity has simply been reduced to one of these, a battery, to power the structure of the Matrix, to power the machine world. And uh, that is what we are when we see ourselves and we allow ourselves to be seen as human resources. Ultimately, the financial system boils down to one word, slavery. It is what is used to really chain us and get us to see ourselves as workers, as a worker race of people, and it's, it's used to actually keep us in servitude, to serve interests that really don't, we don't benefit from. We think we do, but in, in essence we don't. Things continue to go on as they are, benefiting an elite class, a very small elite class, while millions of people go hungry and starve. And there's no reason for it. The, the financial system is slavery as long as a differential profit motive monetary system is in existence, human beings will live under slavery. Until we recognize that there are, are only people and resources on this planet and we use our power of will to properly distribute the resources to the people as they need them and as we prop wisely use them. And not in destruction of the earth, looking at, at the earth as something that we own, but something that we are ourselves a part of and we use and manage these, these resources efficiently. Until we do that and get away from a profit motive differential source of, uh, of, of seeing uh, money, seeing goods, okay, and services, there will be human slavery. And I will go so far as to say that is exactly as it should be. Everything is now exactly as it should be. Based on our level of consciousness, we are getting what 
we are creating through our consciousness. This isn't something that is happening to us. That's why I say we are the, in the hidden chamber of the pyramid controlling the shots. It is up to us what we put into manifestation through our thoughts, emotions, and actions that determines what happens to us collectively. So if we want to continue to believe in the monetary system and continue to live as if somehow it, it never has gotten us what we really want. It's always created more suffering and more debt and more enslavement. But we want to believe, we want to stay attached to a belief system that doesn't benefit us. And we want to think we'll continue to do that and, and somehow it'll just work out okay. We'll suddenly just get something that we've never gotten as a result of doing this. We're going to continue to be enslaved. And again, it should not be any other way. When we change our consciousness, the shackles will come off.